Thank you, Major. Appreciate you being here as always. Invocation and pledge will be con uh, conducted by District 1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For invocation tonight, we have the third grade class from Highland Rim Academy who will be offering the invocation in Latin. Okay, Mr. Clerk, when you're ready, please call the roll. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you will take your handsets and press yes for me tonight, press yes, and stop right there. Everybody pressing yes. Mr. Chairman, we have 23 present, one absent. There is a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, commissioners, I'd like to move, uh, if I can get a motion and approval, item E5, E5, to follow report of special committees, so it would make it B1, item E5, uh, due to some time constraints of the honorees, and they need to be places. We'd like to recognize them and make sure we don't rush through it. Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion to second. Any discussion on approval of the agenda? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Item number six, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Item number seven, election of chairman of the county commission. The nominating committee recommends the consideration of Ben Rogers. Motion is second. Are there any other nominations? Time out. Who made the motion? Who made the motion? I'll make the motion. Nobody made the motion. I'll make it. All right. Oh, okay. And Ms. Br I got it. I'm sorry, I just didn't catch that. All right. Second. It was. A, I got the second. I make a motion. Nomination cease. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Commission. I'll continue to work hard, and I'll promise you I'll get better. I appreciate your uh, support and trust. Item number eight, election of Chairman Pro Temp of the County Commission. The nominating committee recommends the consideration of Jim Martin. So moved. Second. Have a motion second. Are there any other nominations? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Vice Chairman Martin. Item number nine, election of parliamentarian of the county commission. The nominating committee recommends the consideration of Mike Atwood. So moved. Second. second. Have a motion second. Are there any other nominations? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Atwood. Thank you. You do a good job. You good, Wayne? I'm good. Okay. Thank you, brother. 
Item number 10, unfinished business and action thereon by the board. A, report of standing committees. Number one, planning committee. No unfinished business. Number two, fiscal review committee. No unfinished business, Mr. Chair. Number three, nominating committee. No unfinished business. Thank you. Item B, report of special committees. B1, I'd like to welcome Mayor Randy Porter up. And we will recognize retiring Regional Planning Commission members Kay Detweiler and Richard Wright. Mayor Porter. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, we have two of our Regional Planning uh, Commission members that have been serving for many years that will be retiring uh, this month. And I wanted to recognize them for the great job that they have done for the Regional Planning Commission. I'll start with Ms. Kay Detweiler. I met Kay when she was working at the State Planning Office, which was out on 15th Street for many years. And, and they actually provided us a planner for many years while the State Planning Office was there. Kay and I go back so far as to when the county, when we addressed all of the houses from the old rural and route box numbers to street addresses back in the late 80s, and when the county commission named all of the roads in Putnam County back in the middle 80s. And uh, so we're going to tell our age here, Kay. But uh, uh, Kay's been serving on the planning commission for, for many years and has done a great job. And, and with the state planning office, with all the many hours that she put in it with helping us and all good city and other municipalities in, uh, in case. So an appreciation for your many years of dedicated service to the citizens of Putnam County. I want to say thank you uh, and for the great job that you've done. Thank you so much. that it's been a great honor to serve the county in which we live. We moved here in 1976, and we have, very, we have been retired since 2001, and we stayed because we love this city and county. I did work for four years from 78 to 82 for the city of Cookville as an assistant planner Previous to that, I'd been a teacher, but I had a little problem getting a teaching job in Putnam County at that time because certain school board members wanted only people who had born and raised in Putnam County. Um, then in 1982, I had the opportunity to go to work for the uh, local planning office of the state of Tennessee, which was uh, the one that provided planning assistance to the various counties and towns in this Upper Cumberland region. And through that work I worked with, um, in the 20 years I was there, I worked with Allgood, Birdstown, Pickett County, Livingston, Sparta, Crossville, I uh, got to uh, Smithville, DeKalb County, Cannon County, Warren County, um, I think I covered them all, but I had a wonderful, oh, Red Boiling Springs, too. So I drove all over there. So it, you know, I was in an advisory capacity at the, it, with that job, and of course the local planning office was done away with not long after Governor Haslam reorganized development. But I'm very, I was very, very happy that the county commission, this county commission, and a few other communities elected to create an office where we could have planning technical assistance. Kevin Rush now is our planner. And I hope that you will continue to fund that effort because it's very important. Um, it was hard on a lot of these communities to lose this planning technical assistance that the state provided. Um, I want to encourage all of you here to continue to look forward with all the growth we're having in Cookville and Putnam County and so many people moving here from out of state and staying here through their retirement like we have. Um, I know there's a lot of challenges and issues facing this group as well.
think forward thinking for you all. And I'm here to continue to support the county in any way I can. And I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to have these words to share with you about my... It was really nice to sit on the decision-making side when I left the advisory side. Thank you. Mr. Wright. Mr. Richard Wright goes back many, many years with the Planning Commission, maybe back to its inception, Mr. Wright. Uh, I think you had a stint where you left for a little while, maybe went to another state and came back, but uh, he has been the chairman of the Regional Planning Commission for many years, and he and Kay have, have saw so many changes over, over the last several years in Putnam County with all the growth, and they've done a, a terrific job. And I want to say another word about Mr. Wright. If you've never been to his farm, you should go sometime. He has almost every species of tree that there is that he's planted on his farm. When we lost a tree out here at the, in front of the courthouse, uh, he contacted me and I went out and we probably spent an hour riding around looking at all the trees he's got, picking out a good tree as a replacement. So he's a, he's a horticulturist also and, and does a great job. But Mr. Wright, in appreciation for your many years of dedicated service to the Planning Commission, thank you so much and we appreciate what you've done. Thank you. I arrived in Cookville 68 years ago, Tennessee Tech. And um, except for four years to go away for graduate school for a little bit up in Illinois, learn how, where you do see a lot of ice and snow. And then uh, in 1978, uh, I finished nine years of service on the quarterly court nine years because I had a partial term as a result of reorganizing the court for one man, one vote. And um, then when I came back from a tour of work in Atlanta, I uh, pretty soon joined the Planning Commission again and eventually became chair. Uh, the Planning Commission makes a great effort to be sure that when new subdivisions are created, that the roads are built to good specifications and good condition and they're going to last and they have fire protection and they have water service and that makes the county a better county. Well, thank you all. It's been a nice time. Uh, I think it was uh, 51 years ago I last served on the quarterly court and uh, it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't near as nice as it is now. <laughs> Chair, if I can, while you're walking back up, I think it would be, uh, I know a lot of the new commissioners probably don't know the members of the regional planning. We have some with them tonight. I just, for the purpose of recognizing them and saying thanks for coming, I know you came to honor uh, Kay and, uh, and Richard, uh, but Phil Wilburn's here with us. He's a member of our planning commission. Uh, Jerry Mason also is a, a member of the regional planning commission and our planner, uh, Kevin Rust is also with us. Gentlemen, if you will, stand for us and be recognized because they may need you sometime. <laughs> also, their families are here, Ms. Chair, and I'm sure you recognize that, but Kay has her family with her. Uh, so we appreciate them being here also. Thank you, Mr. Atwood. Thank you both for your service to Putnam County. Item C, other unfinished business. Hear from Mayor, County Mayor Randy Porter on potential fairground properties. Thank you, Mr. Neighbors. Commissioners, back at, during the previous county commission, uh, some of you were here and some of you weren't. 
Uh, they had requested that I look for land for a new fairgrounds expo center uh, type facility. Uh, I did that for about a year, came up with a property uh, which was down at the old racetrack in Baxter. Uh, and at that time, the commission decided that they did not want it to be outside the city limits of Cookville. So that was voted down. Uh, since that time, uh, Portobello, $150 million project is gonna locate there. So I, I don't believe it, that anything happens by accident. Uh, so I think that was just meant to be. So uh, we're gonna have a great project there. Uh, so tonight I want to give you an update, a report. Uh, it's not an agenda item that we're going to be discussing, but you feel free to ask questions if you have. Next month at the County Commission, I'll put it back on the agenda and we'll be able to, y'all can have discussion and debate on it. For the past two years since then, I've been looking for property across Putnam County, specifically inside the seed limits of Cookville, uh, 100 acres or more uh, that would be for a a new fairgrounds event expo center type uh, property. Problem in Putnam County is, is right now, as you know, all the development and growth that we have going on, it's very difficult to find 100 plus acres uh, that folks want to sell for what I would call a reasonable price. Uh, I've looked at many, many, many parcels over the last couple of years. Uh, some of them were good land, they just didn't have the infrastructure, they didn't have water, they didn't have sewer. Uh, they didn't have visibility, they had all kinds of environmental issues. There's, uh, it's just a Duke's mixture of all the property that I looked at. Tonight I'm bringing you two uh, pieces of property to look at for your consideration. Uh, let me say this before I do though. The previous commission, their idea was is that we, you, the, the county commission, would buy a new piece of property move the fairgrounds to, to the new piece of property, build new facilities, and they were looking at building a new event expo type center, a large building that you could have events in, something similar to what Wilson County has done if you've ever been to Wilson County's event center. Uh, you're gonna need to decide if that's what this commission wants to do. I'm bringing you a report tonight of two properties I've found. You're gonna need to, over the next month or two, decide if that's something you wanna do and whether you wanna move forward with it or not. First parcel, it's actually two parcels. This is down on the new Tennessee Avenue uh, that with a filth interchange that was constructed and opened last year. Uh, it's two parcels, I call it the Nash Medley property. Uh, it's two landowners have come together and are willing to, uh, to sell uh, parts of both of their parcels, uh, basically to create one. Um, it has road frontage on Tennessee Avenue it also has a small amount of road frontage and access off of Hawkins Crawford Road. You have all of these in your presentation uh, of what the land looks like uh, from an aerial view. Uh, this is farmland. Uh, before the road, uh, New Tennessee Avenue went through it, uh, all of the access coming into this property was back off of Buffalo Valley Road or off of Hawkins Crawford Road. Along with that property, uh, each property has issues. Uh, this is some of the, uh, and I'll, I'll, I can't point to both of them, so I'll point to this one. Uh, the blue shades are ponds. Uh, of course, when you look at ponds, they're considered wetland uh, with the state and, and with the feds, with the Corps of Engineers. And this green is wetland that's for the, that are around the ponds, and these blue are small streams. Uh, this property is, is good property, it's good land, but it does have a few issues. The way that I'll show you in a few minutes of the way that the architects have laid out uh, the things on this property, you're gonna find that we would do very little uh, involved with the streams of the wetlands uh, around them without having to uh, actually deal with those. It's about 110 to 125 acres, depending on how much we want. Uh, there's actually more than that of the two parcels put together. It's more like uh, 130 or 40, but uh, we tried to leave a, a buffer. Uh, if you look, there's a subdivision over here and there's some small residential housing here. This is the trust factory here uh, that Mr. Nash owns. Uh, so we tried to leave a buffer in between uh, any of this stuff as far as the parcel that we draw out. 
but realized that if the county wanted it, I'm sure they would sell all of it. As I said, it's Tennessee Avenue, has access off of Hawkins Crawford Road. Tennessee Avenue is a controlled access road, kind of like 56 at Baxter is. Uh, so the, the control point for access into this property has already been set, and it's up here towards the property line uh, to the north. So there's not allowed to be access going down. There's only parts or points on the Tennessee Avenue that you can have access. So the interest of the property would be here along with access over on Hawkins Crawford Road here as another entrance or exit. One of the issues with this property is it currently does not have sewer out on Tennessee Avenue yet, but I'm working with the city uh, to, try to, to try to get that sewer out there. Uh, the price per acre on this property is $27,000 an acre. Uh, I can tell you that we started much higher and, and that's the final number that I have an option on the property for. And an option will continue to about the end of November. So on both of these properties, commission is going to need to make a decision either in October at the very latest at November if you want to purchase either one of the properties. Next piece of property is what we call the Trinity Church property. It's out off of Highway 111 and Old Sparta Road. Uh, here's Old Sparta Road coming into the property. It's on the both sides of Old Sparta Road with most of the land being on the um, far right as we're looking at the property or on the east side of Old Sparta Road. Uh, it actually does have a small amount of access uh, coming into 111 here. The property touches the right of way of 111 not sure TDOT would ever allow access off of 111 there at that uh, at that location. This is a 111. Uh, there's an arrow view of it. Uh, this property, uh, Trinity Church bought this property several years ago um, with the intention of, of building something on it, and I think they may have changed their mind and, and are interested in selling it now. Uh, this property has, as does any property in Putnam County, has issues also. Uh, the red dots are sinkholes uh, that are on the property. It has two ponds and a, here's another small pond or a little wet area uh, that's on the property. Uh, here again, when you see the layouts that the architects have put, uh, we could work around those and, and not actually have to do anything with those, uh, those parts of the property. It's 109 acres. Uh, let me go back. There's multiple parcels of this. Uh, this parcel here goes in with it. There's a house right here over on the Old Sparta roadside that uh, they, the church uses right now. They prefer to keep that house in about an acre or two tract of land with it, but if that's a deal breaker with the uh, county commission, I think we could probably work something out. There is a house or two over on this other parcel over here that I didn't get drawn in. Uh, that goes with the property. And it runs, this is old bridge road uh, that runs down this way that it has frontage all the way up and down old bridge. But the property, you start up at Old Sparta Road, as you move down towards the back of the property, it falls off. Uh, the terrain changes and it goes down as you go back, uh, back on this back part of the property here. As I said, it's 109 acres, Old Sparta Road 111. It already has sewer and water that runs uh, on Old Sparta Road already. If you're familiar with the new Stonecom radio station, uh, this parcel right above it is where Stonecom just built, just built their new radio station. The uh, price on it is 34800 an acre, and it was much more than that when we first started. I worked down to what I feel like is the bottom dollar price that these people are going to be willing to accept. I'm going to move forward in some of these and come back to these. What I want to do, and you have them in your packet as the last three pages. I gave you some architect's drawings, uh, and our architect and engineer, uh, Kim and Scott, are here. Uh, if you have any questions tonight, uh, this gives, there's nothing set in stone, okay? We haven't got to the point of saying uh, there needs to be a, a big arena, even though there does, uh, a barn. Uh, here's the event center with 13, 1,400 parking spaces to be able to accommodate uh, the crowds that you would have. It's just showing you uh, some ideas that they've come up with that we can do and stay away from the, uh, uh, from the water and the ponds and stuff that's out there. Of course, realizing 
taking care of a pond is not that big a deal if we need to do something with that. The streams might be will be more difficult, but uh, but the little ponds won't. That's one idea. Another one is is that uh, you put the barn and a pavilion down here, and you put the expo center up here, or that the other one uh, you actually could have this as a future. Uh, idea of to put stuff up there if you want to for future expansion or something else that the county wanted. This is one of the, um, about the Trinity property with a barn down here and the arena and ring here, a uh, pavilion here, uh, the large expo center here, and this could be for future development, or you could have the, uh, the expo center on the other side of the road. The only thing about this uh, is the traffic on Old Sparta Road and walking across the road would be an issue. We'd have to have some kind of overhead walkway or something to which you don't have people walking on, the, on that part of the uh, <coughs> on that part of the road. So here's my ideas to you. Uh, don't think of this just as a fairgrounds. Uh, if you, if all you want is a fairgrounds. Uh, we can buy either one of these pieces of property and, uh, and we go out and we can build an arena and spend a whole lot less money. Uh, my thought is if you're, if you're looking at doing something and the previous commissions was is that we build an expo or event center that's going to bring in revenue, it's going to bring in events, it's going to bring in sales tax to, to the county. Currently we you basically have Hyder Birch which stays rented almost all the time, uh, indoor arena. I'm talking about if we did something like this would be 40 or 50,000 square foot building that's totally open. Concrete down in the smaller venues inside with pulling those portable walls together uh, that you could have multiple events going on at one time or you could have a single, one single big event going on. I will tell you in talking to the Wilson County folks, they built theirs a few years ago, they are booked every weekend for a year out with something going on at that Expo Center every weekend. Uh, I think ours would be similar. I have people all the time. We brought the caving conference to Putnam County. You had 1,200 people that came to. If we had not had, we had the hotel rooms, but if it had not been for Jerry Boyd and the school system being willing to let them use the high school for their meeting space and Tennessee Tech, we wouldn't have got them in Putnam County because they had no place to, to get that many people together to be able to have their events. So uh, to me, it, it makes sense, but that's going to be something you're going to have to decide as a commission if it's something you want to do or not. Remember, the fire only meets 10 days uh, uh, out of the year, and the rest of the time, I mean, we rent the old fire ground some, but uh, uh, nothing like I think we would rent something like this. And the final thought on that is, in my opinion, doing nothing is not an option. You either can buy property move the fairgrounds, either build an event center or not. Fairgrounds was, it used to be down here on, off of North Maple. Uh, when people moved it, when it was moved, the commission decided to move it out uh, there in the middle 50s. Uh, my father-in-law said that uh, there was all kinds of uproar then because we thought it was moving it way out of town. Uh, of course, as you see now, uh, that was a great move on their part to have got that land and to have it. But it's it's basically it's it's reached its uh, potential. Uh, we had the Fourth of July uh, celebration out there with the fireworks, parked over 900 cars, and all the streets around it were lined solid of people still trying to get in. They had Walmart parking lots and all those parking lots full. Uh, if, if you don't want to do this, we're going to spend some money out at that fairgrounds or stop the fairgrounds altogether, and that's a decision y'all are about to make. I don't think that's a good idea. I think uh, the fair draws a lot of people in, uh, and I think a new one would draw it in too. And one final slide. Okay, for you, help you to make your decision, I have gave you the presentation with the drawings. Uh, I have drone footage of each one of these properties that I will send you an email tonight after the county commission and you can go on YouTube uh, and I'll give you the link, you can click on it and it'll be flying over the properties. You can spend some time looking at the property. Uh, we will set up uh, sometime after this week one evening and probably one Saturday with the landowners 
that if you want to go out and look at the property, we'll take some gators out there and you can drive around on the property and look at it. Uh, I have the option, like I said, until the end of November on both properties, it's held and until y'all make a decision if you want to buy either one of them or not. Uh, you can either make a decision at your October 21st meeting, but the very latest that you can make a decision will be the November 18th meeting because after that, the options go away. Uh, my recommendation to you is, is take some time. We'll put this back on the agenda in October for you to start discussion on it. If you want to make a decision, then you can't, but can, or, or whatever you want to do. But uh, if you've got questions on the properties, please, and I prefer that you email me the questions because if you'll do that, a question that you're answering may be a question that someone else has, and then I'll reply and send it to all the commissioners so that you'll all get the answers to those questions. Uh, I probably will have the answers to most of those uh, with all the work we've done. We've already done the environmentals on each one of these properties. Uh, we have those in hand. Uh, I have a, uh, uh, with the old fairgrounds, uh, we've been working with an appraiser uh, at the October meeting, I will have you an appraisal uh, on that property as to what he thinks it's worth, and uh, he try to give you all the all the answers and the facts that you need to be able to make a decision. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor Porter. For the sake of questions, uh, he said he'd entertain questions. Be glad to he'll be glad to answer them. We'll say to review, study the presentation, ask him questions. But for the sake of questions, can we use our handheld, Mr. Clerk? So I can recognize people if they have questions. Sure. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thirty five and a half acres. Thirty five and a half. We looked uh, I've been meeting with architects and, and engineers, like I said, for about three years now. Uh, and to build everything we're gonna need, if you wanna build that'll be an expo center. You're going to need about a 90 to 100 acres of buildable land. You may have to buy a little more than that to get that many of buildable land, but that's a, that's a good estimate. It's not coming up, so raise your hand. I'm uh, sorry. No, uh, that's okay. It's okay. But button's not working. Commissioner Bennett. Mr. Mayor Porter, you yes. mentioned the event center 40 to 50,000 square feet. How did we come up with that number? Just looking at uh, uh, other event centers across the, the state, I visited uh, several others, Williamson County, Wilson County, there was three of them I visited. Kind of looking at what they had done. Are uh, they about that size? Uh, Wilson County is actually a little bigger than that. Uh, that number is just kind of a number pulled out of the air. Uh, there's nothing, like I said, none of this stuff has been set in stone on any of it. It's all just examples to give you. So whether that's 30,000 square foot or 60,000, that'd be up to the commission. That's just the number I pulled. Commissioner Venadio. Mayor Porter, uh, my question is, there, there, there very well, very well may be will to let the fairgrounds in town go. Um, I guess my question is the use of that, where, where would it go? Is, it, is that going to be a uh, residential? Is it going to be commercial? What, what are we, what are we going to be looking at that? Where is it going to go? That's a very good question, AJ. When, when the county county cannot just go and privately sell its land, okay, you have three options when it comes to selling county property, and it has you have to allow everyone to have the opportunity to buy that property. So you either have to sell it at a public auction, you have to sell it on an internet type auction, or you have to sell it at sealed bid. So if you decided you wanted to do that, you'd have to make it surplus property, vote to make it surplus property, and then decide how you want that property sold. Uh, with talking to the appraiser and stuff, uh, and we don't have the appraisal yet, but they're thinking somewhere at a minimum of 10 million, uh, could be 13 million, could be higher, but uh, he thinks that if you're gonna sell it, lower of a certain amount that you say, this is the lowest amount we would take, and then you either sell it at one of those three options, normally you're gonna get more money selling it at a, uh, uh, public auction or internet auction. Uh, seal bid, you're taking, I mean, sure. you, don't, you don't get that to backers and forwards that you get with, uh, with those other auctions. So uh, those are the three ways uh, that, that you can sell county property. Thank you. Commissioner Martin. Don't 
Donald. On 109 acres, you recall what that sold for last year? I do not. I'll get that for you, though. Yeah. They've had it several years. I'll find out what they gave. I, I think it's about a million that they gave for it, but don't hold me to that, and please don't print that because that's just a guesstimate. I'll find out for you, though. Thank you, Mr. Watson. You're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, I know we talked about this uh, before. I said thank you again for uh, doing all this work because uh, we've been talking about this for years, and it's definitely something when you look to Wilson County and other places and you see the value of having these kind of properties, it's definitely something worth looking into. Uh, what I was going to look at, because we talked privately also before, and I've been on the record numerous times about the value of looking for uh, sponsorships and business partners on facilities like this to cut on costs, uh, with the Trinity Church property, you said there's a little bit of the property that faces 111, mm -hmm. and then also Stonecom is close by. Is there any potential maybe working with them as well and maybe trying to direct traffic that way and, and putting up sponsorships if we go that route and that sort of thing? And I think anything's an option, Commissioner Wanzon. I, all I've done is look for property at this point, and, uh, and so all this is wide open. Uh, for the commission to decide. I think I think all every option's on the table, and I think all of it should be something we look at. Thank you again for doing this, because like I said, this is definitely a definitely could be a great thing for our community. We look. I've heard a uh, Rotary actually, Rotary International's been interested in looking at our community, but they just can't find the venue sometimes for some of their events. And there's others that are out there as well too. So this could definitely go a, a big step forward in helping to bring folks into our community even more. So thank you again. You're welcome, Commissioner Williams. Thank you. I have two questions. Um, has there been any kind of conversation about possibly attracting the state fair to Cookville? There was some discussion back when that first came up, Commissioner Williams. Uh, the amount of land required, space and parking, of course at that time we didn't have anything that was big enough. Uh, and, but there was some talk, but we, that kind of went away when we didn't. I, I didn't know if and it, and it was private talk sure. among city, county. Is that something we could look at doing or not? And, and we couldn't come up with a track of land big enough. To would would one of these suffice? I, I don't know what they have in Nashville. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the second question, what if we bought both of them? Do we have the funds available to buy both of them? And the reason I, I mention that is at some point, a little bit down the road, the schools are going to need a parcel of land for a future high school. Um, if there's an opportunity to buy both, not not in cash, but when you start looking at uh, when you start looking at the the bond rates and and how low the the interest rates are on bonds right now, uh, I mean you can always you can borrow the money. We uh, but if you wanted to just pay cash, unless you raided the funds and took them down really low, I mean you could, but I would I would not recommend it because we've got good fund balances and that what that's what keeps our bond rating high like it is. So. Uh, no, not in pay cash. So we, we could buy one and not hurt us, but if to buy both would kind of hurt us. We'd need a bond to do well, both. Well, I think we'd have to do a bond. And, and my idea was if you decide you wanted to buy the land, if you're looking at doing something with the old fairgrounds, uh, go with short term with the loan pool at the state and get a very cheap interest rate. I don't know what it is right now, Commissioner Rogers, probably 2% or less. It's less than that. Yeah, it's less than 2%. So you, you're paying very little interest. You can get the land locked in, and then you can decide what you want to do. It buys you some time then to decide what you want to do if, if you want to go that way. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson. Thank you. Uh, I know these are preliminary drawings, mm -hmm. uh, but there's n nothing on either one of them that shows anything about the midway. Yes, there is. That is the midway, the circle. Okay, because it says rodeo ring. Well, that's on the inside, and then the circle around the rodeo ring is the midway. Okay, because uh, it wasn't stated. It's no, it's not stated it. on there. Thank it's you for clearing that. Like I said, those are just examples. Of, I know. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that it was addressed. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Commissioner Moss. Mr. Porter, can you hear me? Usually when we start a large project like this, uh, when it comes to revenue, we usually have a small entry level and we have the maximum. Do you have either something like that in mind or is it just a hit and miss right now? Depends on how much you want to do. Uh, working with the architects, their ballpark price has been around 10 million if you do the event center and, and the midway and the arena and stuff. Uh, and that, that's a ballpark. It just depends on how much we want to do and how big we want things and so forth. 
uh, but that's that's kind of been a ballpark number we've been throwing around. Now, that's that was to do all of it. Uh, building prices are extremely high right now, uh, but the buildings that we're looking at doing are not anything fancy. Uh, you're talking about an arena, an outdoor arena. You're talking about a barn. You're talking about a metal building that's that's wide open. So. Uh, there's not anything fancy about any of the buildings that I think that would really jack the square footage up. But the, the, the key to building this, I think, is, is hitting it at a good time. Uh, having the land locked in where you know where it's at. Do a lot of planning on the project and figure out what you want and then try to hit the building at a good time, maybe when it's not, not so hot as it is right now. Uh, there's so much building going on at Tech, which has pulled a lot of the contractors over to Tennessee Tech. and and they're backed up, but when you get those buildings finished, you know, I think that will slow down some. I don't think it's going to hit a brick wall. I think we're going to still see a building, but hopefully those prices will, will ease up a little bit, but who knows? It's, my crystal ball is not working tonight. So. I realize that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Dunn? Two questions. Uh, do we have a current appraisal on the, our current fairgrounds? That's what I'll have to you in October. That's what we're getting. Okay, good deal. And did you look That's did, a fine facility. It is. And I look, I did not visit it yet, but we had pictures and videos of it to be able to view it. And yes, I did. Commissioner Neal? I have a couple of questions, too. One of them is, do you know how much revenue, any idea we might be able to generate from the Expo Center per year? I guess I'm just thinking, depending on how much it'd be booked, I understand that. You would, um, you would hope, Commissioner Dale, that the goal with most of these facilities is to break even, is to pay for all the expenses, and to, you're bringing all those events in and generating all that sales tax and hotel, motel tax and people coming in. Uh, I'm not saying that you would make a profit, uh, but the goal you know, would be to at least break even. Um, and I, it's going to depend. It may take a year or two to get it built up. but. Uh, Right. Well, I know that we've traveled around different places for youth sports and stuff like that, going to different communities and playing. And it's always been people coming from all over the place, and it'd be very crowded on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, with teams coming from everywhere. And I think that generates a lot of uh, revenue for the restaurants and hotels and everything else that we see. But uh, let me ask you this, Mayor. The uh, other thing that I've spoke with a couple of people about that I've been thinking about. We're sitting on some of this property. What about the what about the school board property, the the, the bus transportation garage and power on that we would have to keep that, but we have a lot of land there. And just thinking about the value of that, I don't know if that might be something that we should be looking at also because that's a pretty prime property, I would think, where it's sitting at. Well, it definitely increased in value just a few months ago when the stockyard, stock barn was taken down. Uh, that is some prime property. Uh, by a developer that was looking at trying to develop some of that down in there, and he was needing... Uh, needing that property to make up to get him enough, uh, but then I never, never heard anything else. So it's some prime property also that uh, uh, sitting right in the middle of South Jefferson area, uh, it definitely has increased in value uh, several fold over the last few years. So it'd be something the commission wanted to, we'd take a look at also. Well, I just think that if uh, Commissioner Bradford's personnel, they need to test drive a bus or whatever, or maybe even get the equipment out on the road, it'd be a lot easier to get it out somewhere like Tennessee Avenue or something than it will be up on Veterans Drive in Jefferson. That's just yeah. my thinking about it. When you have to remember, uh, they were looking out in the future back then, and that was way out in the country back then, and it was easy in and out. Now the city has moved out to it, so I, I agree with you. That's probably not the prime location for a school bus garage and a county road department, but that's up to the commission as to what you decide to do. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Commissioner Caspi? Mayor Porter, a couple of quick questions. Uh, and I, I know you said your crystal ball wasn't working a minute ago. Assuming we approve one of these properties in October or November, 
ballpark general time frame uh, for where the fairgrounds would be moved? I think you're looking at probably several months, probably a year of getting planning everything, getting drawings and all that kind of stuff. And you're probably looking at another year to 18 months to build it. So if you bought it tonight, you're probably three years out would be my guess. That's, the, that's a guess to me. Yeah. And I'm always adding and subtracting, uh, playing with uh, obviously preliminary. If we buy property for three, three and a half million, and um, spend 10 million to make it look like what we want, and we sell the current fairgrounds for 10 to 13 million, that's almost a, a, a wash at that point. That would, uh, to me, that would make uh, any deal a lot more favorable. And Absolutely, and, and the goal back three years ago was is that when we're looking at the Baxter property, which is 2.7 million, is making it a, a wash is what you sell. Of course, building prices have went up considerably since then, but also the value of the old fairgrounds has went up considerably since then. So uh, I think you're still probably close to that, but uh, until we get into a process of planning and deciding what you want on the property and all those kind of things, it's just a purely guesstimate right now. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chair. Oh. Just one yes. quick thing. Yes, sir. School bus garage in the county highway department is county property. Yeah. Commissioner Ford? I just wanted to comment on what your father-in-law told you about the old fairgrounds. If you go down Maple, I mean Broad Street, turn left on Maple, and it goes right up past Free Street, and it goes down that big old hill, mm -hmm. right in that gully was where the fairgrounds was on both sides yeah. of it. And about 54, it burned. It did. I remember going over there with my father, and all the tents had burned and everything looking at it. It did, and then, and then they started building the new fairgrounds right after that. You're right, Commissioner Ford. Commissioner Atwood. Yeah, quickly, I just want to address uh, Commissioner Neal's question. When talking to Larry Thompson, who was the, the over the Ag Center in Wilson County, I asked him about the income for that particular uh, venue. Uh, at that time, when we started talking about this, they had gotten about $500,000 that year in income. We're making about 10000 on the fairgrounds we've got, and, and they made 500000 Don't know how they broke. We didn't talk about red or black ink, but that's what the, uh, that's what the revenue was. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Board. One last thing. Uh, email me your questions. We'll set up dates to go visit the property. I'll send you the YouTube links to go look at the drone photos. Uh, remember, nothing's locked in stone. This is all wide open to do. If you want to do something, great. If you don't want to do anything, it's, it's okay. It's, this is totally your decision. I just want to try to get you all the facts that you need to make a good decision. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, Mayor. doing anything wasn't an option. Okay, but what do you guesstimate to build this very ground up to what it would take? I'm I really don't have a through. clue, Commissioner Moss, but it'd be a few million dollars. It'd be it, because you're looking at the size of those grandstands and, and, and which would be your most expensive thing with building those uh, grandstands. I think you could spend two or three, four million dollars out there pretty easy. It is my guess, but now that's totally a guess. Thank you. Item number 11, quarterly reports and action there on by the board. A, road fund, Randy Jones, road supervisor. B, school funds, Jerry Boyd, director of schools. And C, county general fund, debt service fund, solid waste sanitation fund, parks and recreation fund, and the self-insurance fund, Randy Porter, county mayor. Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. I just want to make one statement. If, if you were able to review our county general fund, we talked about through budget committee all year long about where it was going to end and we didn't really know for sure. Looks like we uh, used about 1.4 million of fund balance in county general fund. So that we were at 16 million, now we're down about four. We, we used up 1.4 million, so. Any discussion on those? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Quarter reports have been approved. <coughs> Item number 12, 
new business and action there on by the board. A, report of standing committees, planning committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The planning committee recommends approval for transferring an ambulance chassis from the Putnam County EMS to the Putnam County Parks and Recreation. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. The planning <coughs> committee recommends approval of a resolution to establish Putnam County, Tennessee as a drug free workplace. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mayor Porter? Just a quick thing. I just want to make sure everybody understands that we have been basically been doing all the things required to be a drug free workplace for several years. The only thing we hadn't done because of us being self insured is we hadn't filed with the state or with the government to get that certification. So now that they changed the law, uh, we decided it was a good thing to file the certification. But we've been drug testing and doing all that stuff for many years. So I didn't want anybody to think that we just are now starting this. Yeah, Thank you. Commissioner Neal? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, talk about that for a second. Coming from the world of law enforcement, we were random randomly selected for these screenings on a periodic basis and uh, I think it's a good thing and uh, I want to say that I remember myself when the sheriff was running for office that was going to be one of the big things that he was going to be implementing was the drug screen process and uh, I think that the sheriff probably implemented that pretty quickly if I'm not mistaken and uh, I don't know if you want to say something about that, Sheriff, or not, but I think that it's, I think that it's good. I think it will help our insurance. I think that it helps our, uh, I think that it helps our employees. It makes for a safer working environment for everybody, because I don't want to be work. I know I don't want to be working with somebody that might be impaired on something that, you know, that could get somebody hurt or killed, especially in, uh, in, you know, with what we're doing in public service. Thank you, Commissioner Neal. Yeah, we implemented that immediately when we got in office. And so we do initial drug testing when we do the hiring. And then we also uh, work with occupational health. Dr. Hudson over there who randomly selects out of a computer generated list. And so we have names periodically come up every month uh, and do the random drug testing. So do you, uh, Sheriff, I don't mean to interrupt, but what about your command staff? And I mean, uh, do, do you drug test everybody? I actually got to go last month myself, so yes, we all oh. drug test. <laughs> Did you pass? Yeah. Did you pass? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was just going to add that we drug test, we do random drug tests. I'm like Eddie, I go through and get drug tested just like everybody else does. So, you know, the highway department's been doing it for a long time. It's basically because we have CDLs, but we do them, but everybody else drug tests too. Thank you. Thank Mr. Randolph? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask the sheriff a question. Okay. This is something that uh, I, have a, I have a CDL and I drive for a living occasionally. Um, and I've, we've been hearing a lot of reports out there about CBD oil, the health benefits of CBD oil, or fibromyalgia, migraines. When you, when you do a random drug test, even of your deputies or a citizen that you may have to do a drug test on, does CBD oil show up as a uh, illegal substance? So that's been a highly debated topic amongst law enforcement uh, around the uh, around the United States actually. And so CBD oil is not regulated by the FDA. So there have been several studies to where some uh, CBD oil that um, uh, presumed to be THC free uh, are not. In fact, people have tested positive for the uh, Non, supposedly the non-CBD oil uh, in that capacity. So we we make all of that testing that it could be positive, um, and we suggest that they don't use it actually. So. <clears throat> so 
should even even anybody feel like they're okay to use CBD oil if they happen to have an accident or they're pulled over by the police department or they're, they have a random drug test. I mean, if this shows up, I'd lose my CDL. Well, once again, it is not regulated by FDA, so there's a lot of companies that uh, have been known and found periodically to have THC in them, so yes, it can show up. <coughs> we suggest don't use it, certainly because of the capacity that we're in, uh, but yeah, if you're uh, using a, a CDL, uh, it, it would be probably smart not to use that. What about these pain pills that everybody's using and they're driving? Does so that? Yeah, that, that, will that will show up in the drug testing. And so uh, that is a no-no. Our, our policy is if somebody's got a prescription medication or pain pills for maybe a surgery or whatever the ailment might be, they have to let us know and we put them in a different uh, selective duty until that period's over. But you don't need to be operating you know, vehicles, equipment, uh, firearms, all that. So yes, we're very selective on, on that. And um, the national uh, FDA and DEA, uh, there is a um, certain amount uh, in your system that's allowable based on prescription. But uh, that usually does not come into play if you have a wreck and have a blood test and uh, the, the blood is sent off to the crime lab and it comes back. Most time it's got a reading on it, positive or negative, than the, the type of drug. So, Mr. Atwood? Yeah, quickly, uh, do we have a countywide tolerance policy? Are we zero tolerance? If, you're, if you pop hot, do, are you fired? Do you dismiss? What is our policy as it relates to our tolerance. Uh, Mr. I see Mr. Jones standing, so must be a legal question. <laughs> Just as Mayor Porter said, we've, we've had these policies regarding uh, use of uh, any kind of intoxicants on the job as part of the countywide personnel policy for years and years. The only thing that's before you guys tonight is whether or not we want to get certified by the state of Tennessee. That's all that this is. And, and the reason that we haven't brought it to you before now, uh, in fact, Randy and I have been talking about this since 2014. The reason we didn't bring it before you earlier to be certified by the state of Tennessee, and let me explain to you what the advantages of being a certified drug-free workplace act by the state of Tennessee are. Number one, you get a reduction of your workers' compensation premiums. So number two, you get a presumption that if, <coughs> if a workers' comp, action, a workers comp uh, action is brought and the person who brought the action was under the influence of a narcotic or an intoxicant, there's a presumption that it was caused by that, okay? So with us, uh, since we're self-insured, the 5% <coughs> decrease in your workers' comp premiums was not really gonna make that big a difference. Secondly, the, the county does a really good job of managing its workers' comp claims. It really does. So the number of workers' comp claims is managed and also the number of workers' comp claims that are attributable to some sort of intoxicant are even smaller. So with all of the burdens and training requirements that were, that were in place prior to May of 2018, we just felt like it wasn't worth doing. Now they have simplified the process for certification where you only have to train one time. You could train them when they come on board, when you onboard them, and so it, it just makes sense to go ahead and do this now. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Planning Committee recommends approval to set speed limits for the following roads. Rock Island Road, 35 mile per hour. Muddy Pond Road at 45 mile per hour. And I so move. Second. We have a motion, a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item D, recommends approval to correct action from May 2019 by setting a portion of Pleasant Ridge Road to 35 mile per hour and I so move. Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That completes planning. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Item number two, Fiscal Review Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item A uh, recommends approval of the budget amendment to the County General Fund. I so move. Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? 
All in favor, say aye. Aye. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 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 All we right. A, we have a voice vote. Thank you, Mr. Clark. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll take your handsets, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. Stop right there. I can't proceed till. All votes are in. Does anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? All right. Mr. Chairman, there are 22 voting yes, one no, one absent. That motion carries. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Item B, uh, Physical Review recommends approval of the budget amendments to the General Purpose School Fund. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Clark, please All call right. the roll. Seeing none, if you take your hand, says, if you favor the motion, vote yes. If you not favor the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. All votes are in. Anyone wants to change their vote anywhere? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Good job. Mr. Chairman, we have 23 voting yes, one absent the rolls call. Motion carried. Thank you, brother. Item C in physical view recommends approval to refund 2017 property taxes. As per the assessor of property and the trustee, I so move. Second. second. Motion second. Any discussion? Mr. Clerk? All right. Seeing none, if you'll take your hand, sis. You favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no. We're one, please vote. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? Excellent. Chairman, have all 23 voting yes, one absent. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, that finishes physical review. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item three, nominating committee. Nominating committee has one item. Recommend the following to serve on the Joint Economic and Development Board for four-year terms to expire September 2023. Mr. Mike Atwood, Regional Planning, and Mr. Clarence Smith, Greenbelt. And I Look, so move. Second. <coughs> Are there any more nominations? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That concludes nominating. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item B, report of special committees. Item C, resolutions. There are no resolutions, Mr. Chairman. Item D, election notaries. Teresa Adams, Martha S. Anderson, Taylor Anderson, Michael E. Buckner, Amanda Ferris, Diane Heron, Jamie Hunter, Jerry Jackson, Jeremy Jones, Frank Kiesler, Megan Luper, Deanna J. Lopes, Lawrence Lundholm, Whitney Mapes, Wendy Massengill, Tyler Mitchell, Jessica McCart Robertson, Michelle Scott, Kelly Sorrell, Megan Thomas, Sherry D. Thurman, Sharon K. Whitaker, Brian Williams, and Hannah Young. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion on notaries? Mr. Clark, when you're ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we, all, we have to vote this one. So, wait, 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 wait. All right. Now, take your hands up. If you favor the motion, vote yes. If you're not in favor of the motion, vote no. Everyone, please vote. That's what I love about this new system. Mr. Sandlin, leave. Huh? Hand me his set, please, sir. of him being present and leaving, he must abstain. All votes are in. Anyone wish to change their vote anywhere? Good. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, you have 22 voting yes, zero no, one <laughs> abstain, one absent. Roll is call. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Item E, other new business. Number one, recognize cash flow analysis for the general purpose school fund. It's included in your packet. Number two, acknowledgement of the fiscal strength and efficient government fiscal confirmation letter for the three-star program requirements. This requires no action, but needs to be incorporated into the minutes. That's also included in your packet. You want to say anything? Good. Just got word last week that we were approved for our three-star again. So that's that helps us on our grants. We pay less uh, in our share uh, on state and federal grants. So it's a good thing. Thank you. Number three, ratification of County Mayor Randy Porter's appointments to the Ethics Committee as follows. Kevin Christopher, one-year term to expire September 2020. Kim Bradford, one-year term to also expire September 2020. So moved. Have a motion to second. Any discussion on ratification? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number four, ratification of County Mayor Randy Porter's appointments to the regional planning list is provided. The appointments to the Regional Planning Commission. You have it. Ah, got it. Had it here. Sorry about that. Jeff Jones, not our attorney. <laughs> term to expire September 30th, 2023. And David Matson, term to expire September 30th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion on the ratification? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We've covered number five. Number 13, announcements and statements. All right. Thank you very much. I have motion a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Motion. Adjourn.